Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord, that you are the everlasting God. You're the Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. And Lord, we are here to praise your name today, God. We're going to celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Lord, when your spirit came down, when Jesus had promised that he was going to send the, the Comforter, and, and he had to leave in order for the Comforter and the Mighty Counselor to come. And, and Lord, we're celebrating that today, Lord. We thank you, God, for you are amazing. And then we have the power of the, your Holy Spirit that we can lead these amazing lives, God, that aren't mustered up in our own strength, God, but by the power of your Spirit. We thank you, God, that you're not sending us out to do this on our own, on our, on our own strength, and our own wisdom, on our own knowledge. We can't do it, God, but with the power of your Holy Spirit, 
this question for the nursery. Well, for those of you who know Stephen Connie Dial, they were sitting in the back last night for the Saturday night service, and my wife whispered in Steve's ear, You're being called to serve and volunteer in the nursery. I'm like, that may or may not be the Holy Spirit, that may be just Pastor Paul. Oh, dear Lord. But anyway, it is a blessing to be here with you this morning. But actually, we are going to be in Acts 2 as we're looking at, you know, the Holy Spirit coming down and the gospel being spread and 3,000 being saved that day and, ah, uh, just uh, some amazing stuff. But what we're going to do, we're actually going to take a little side trip. Before we get there, we're going to be in Joshua 3. So if you want to turn to Joshua 3, um, and I'm going to be reading it out of uh, the New International Version, the NIV Version. Uh, I usually always preach out of the NAS, the New American Standard Bible, which is the Bible that's provided for you in your, uh, in your seat. But I really like the phraseology, I like the wording of it, uh, of Joshua 3 in uh, the NIV. So that's where we're going to be this morning. We're going to start it out. Verse 1. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out for, from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went through the camp, giving, to the, giving orders to the people, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Now, we could spend a lot of time there, or not. We could spend a lot of time going through the parallels of, of uh, the three days and, you know, the Ark of the Covenant. But I want you to, I want you to concentrate on verse 5. I love how it says, consecrate yourselves, set yourself apart. They were the chosen people. They were, they were the ones called to be the holy people. And, it's saying, and Joshua is saying, consecrate yourself, for tomorrow the Lord is going to do some amazing things among you. And I really love that phraseology and the way that it's phrased that way and written that way. He's going to do amazing things among you. Has he been doing amazing things among us? Oh my goodness. And, and the praise reports, the answered prayers on the, on the war board back there, just the, the text that I get during the week, hey, this is what God's doing. The, the email saying, this is how God is working in, in my life. And it's just awesome to see how God is moving in such an amazing way. And, and are we surprised? No. We shouldn't be surprised because that's who he is. He's that good. So as we are gearing up, as we are gearing up for the ministry that he has for us coming up this summer, as we are always looking to where God wants us to go, we always say, we say it, we're going to say it again. God, don't bless what we're doing. We want to do what you're blessing. So as we're gearing up for the summer months coming up, and I know we had a hard frost a couple a couple days ago, and I know it's damp out, and everybody got the gray sweater memo this morning, but it's time to gear up and get ready for what is going on and what God, how God wants us to minister coming up this summer, because there are some amazing things, and He is going to continue, continue to do some amazing things. Now keep in mind, now keep in mind how many centuries before Acts 2 happened. That, that here we are, that Joshua is talking about, the Lord is going to do some amazing things among you tomorrow. Ooh, the Lord is going to do some amazing things. And we're going to be connecting the dots in the next handful of weeks, etc., etc. And where we came off from where we were a few weeks ago with Moses, you know, leading the people to the promised land, and then Joshua being the one. And here we are right before they cross the Jordan. We're going to, we're going to be some, connecting some dots. But always, always knowing that how good God is and how he wants to do some amazing things and how he has been doing some amazing things and how he's going to continue to do some amazing things. So, let's go. We're going to scoot the loop over to Acts. And actually, um, I'm going to read a little bit. 
bit of Acts 1 before we get to Acts 2 in, in celebration of this Pentecost. Oh, uh, let's see. Because Jesus told them to stay put. Now, before we get into that, does anybody know what Pentecost means? Fifty. Right? Fifty. So this is 50 days. We're celebrating 50 days after Jesus, the, the, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And what, what's 40 days after Jesus' resurrection? Does anybody know? Ascension. Somebody said it. Yes. Ascension. Yeah, absolutely. So 40 days is ascension. This is Jesus after he rose from the dead. So hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people saw him, ate with him, physically talked with him, and on the 40, on 40 day, on ascension, he was raised into heaven. Absolutely. To be at the right hand of the Father. That's where he is today. We serve the living God. Absolutely, Jesus died on that cross. But absolutely, again, he rose from the dead. And he is at the right hand of the Father right now. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So 50, 50 actually is Pentecost. That's what that means. And back, you know, some people actually think that Pentecost absolutely acts to, it's when the Holy Spirit came down, church was woo, and people were getting saved because of the gospel message, and, and they were following Jesus full of the Spirit, and the gospel message was spreading to all the nations. Absolutely. But Pentecost was in the Old Testament also. Actually, it had to do with their, their harvest times. It was a, an agricultural society, like this area here, you know, we're, we're heavily, heavily agricultural. Same thing then, because that Passover was actually the start of the barley harvest. So that's when they started harvesting the bar barley. And Pentecost was also known as the uh, Feast of Weeks. Because several weeks during this whole thing, uh, as, as the crops were ripening, at Pentecost basically was the end of the harvest season, and that's when they did the wheat. So Pentecost was a was a thing back then, and in the in the Old Testament. But here we are talking about it in the New Testament, Acts two. So I, in chapter one, Jesus was talking to talking to them. Verse 4, chapter 1. Gathering them together, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised, which he said, You heard of from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So he actually told them to stay put. And what were they doing when they were staying put? They were praying like crazy. They're praying their guts out. And they were waiting. Isn't that how good God is? Because here they were, if, if you remember, we talked about that a handful of weeks ago. When Jesus died, his disciples scattered like mice. Are you kidding me? They were scared to death. <laughs> they had just saw the guy that they were following for the last three years hung on a cotton pick and cross after they pistol whipped him within an inch of his life. Before he even got there, they were scared to death. But after he rose again, and they got to interact with him, and it was he was explaining to them how he was going to set them out into ministry. Some amazing things took place. But then he said, "You, you, before this is after he ascended into heaven after ascension, ascension day, he said, you stay put, you stay put, and you wait for the Holy Spirit to come." Isn't that awesome? That we don't have to put these ministry plans together in our own flesh, in our own weak selves. God is there, and we are powered by the Holy Spirit. I know I preached on this before one time, uh, Mr. Delaney. Steve loved when I brought in my chainsaw that day. And I was given the example of, okay, here's this piece of wood, and the saw, without, the, uh, without it being started, isn't much of a saw, is it? That's kind of us without the Holy Spirit, trying to minister without the Holy Spirit. It's like us with that chainsaw not being on. And then, if you were here that day, we started it up. Yeah. We don't have very good ventilation in here. So when I was driving up that little husky, it got a little bit smelly in here, and it'll smell and dissipate too hot. But Steve loved that. He always asked what I was going to bring. I should have brought it today, right, Steve? <laughs> but that, that's, that's a great picture. We 
don't want to be that saw and not start it. We want to be powered by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is saying, hey, just, just stay put. We're going to send you this. I'm going to send you the Almighty Counselor. And then, then, that's when things are going to happen. So, turn to Acts 2. Acts 2. And we're going to, we're going to probably do the whole chapter, but we'll, we'll do some Reader's Digest version of some of it. Chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house there where they were sitting. And they appeared to them, and there, and there appeared to them tongues as a fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now, there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout and from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Why are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born? And you know my pronunciation skills, so we're going to skip over that. Uh, actually, we're going to go to verse 11. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them in our own tongues speaking of the mighty deeds of God. And they all continued in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others were mocking and saying, They are full of sweet wine. Good old Peter. Peter steps up. But Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose. For it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. So don't you love, and I know we've talked about it before, don't you love how a handful of weeks before, Peter was denying Jesus, and now Jesus is going to use him to be part of this amazing move of the Spirit and the gospel going to all nations. And Peter was a brave boy, wasn't he? Because the, here they were, hearing the gospel, hearing the good news and the good deeds of, the, of God in their own language. How amazing is that? This is the start of the spread of the gospel when Jesus said, before he died, you know, before, he said, go and make disciples of all nations. Isn't that awesome? Go and make disciples. And here's the Spirit coming down upon them. They're hearing it in their own language. And all of these nations are going to be impacted. We today are impacted because of what happened there in Acts 2 that we just read about. And I love Peter's bravery. You know, because he's like, man, oh man, everybody's saying these guys are crazy. Somebody's drunk. They're drunk off their behinds. No, they're not. Peter's like, are you kidding me? It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. It's only the third hour of the day. They're not drunk as you suppose. But this is exactly what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Now, when we are looking at this, and we are studying, okay, here is Acts 2. Here's the day of Pentecost. They started with prayer, and then Peter, as he is preaching, starts with Scripture. Amen? Isn't that awesome? Prayer and Scripture. If we want to see God continue to do some amazing things, don't we have to be on our knees and in His Word? Amen. All right, continuing on. So he starts on this little Old Testament Bible study here. Verse 17. And it shall be in the last days, God says, that I will pour forth of my Spirit on all mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those last days pour forth of my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will grant wonders in the sky above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke, 
The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Isn't it awesome? He hates everybody. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. It's so phenomenal what he is saying here because no one is out of the reach of God. And what, what did we just read? What did we just read? And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you, Jesus. That it wasn't just for the chosen people. It wasn't just for the Israelites. We, the Gentiles, we can now have this amazing promise of this eternal life and the guarantee of our forgiveness of sins because of this amazing Jesus, the Son of God, dying on that cross, rising again, and then the Spirit of God coming. Isn't it awesome? Isn't it awesome? I don't want to let the surprise out, but I, I'm sure a couple of you have seen, noticed that I brought out some stools, and I'm not going to voluntold anybody. I know everybody's, when everybody sees me grab the seat, uh-oh, who's going to be voluntold? I actually already asked. Because we're going to have an amazing testimony today of how God, just like we read, when you call on his name, you can be saved. Amen? Amen. So we're going, to, we're going to hear an awesome testimony in a little bit. Verse 22. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, just as you yourselves know, this man, delivered over by the predetermined plan and foreknowledge of God, you nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. But God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death, since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. Isn't that awesome? There it is, the gospel, right there. And as Peter is preaching it, we're going to read in a few verses how they were convicted. They were so convicted of what happened. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, this man, yeah, we, we nailed him to the cross. But death did not hold him, did it? Now, the Bible says the wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So here's Peter preaching this amazing sermon at Pentecost, and we're going to see what happens. Now, the next few verses you're going to be like, I, I don't know. Okay, so why is David being pulled into this? Well, tradition says, tradition says that King David actually was born and died on Pentecost. I, Pastor Ed, maybe you have some history knowledge of that. It's just, that's what tradition says. So here he is, here's Peter, bringing in King David, who Jesus actually was from the lineage. This is Jesus' pedigree, King David. It's, you know, God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have somebody on the throne from your lineage. Now, that's why there's a, Peter's doing this little, may or may not be why right, Peter's doing this little comparison here. So, we're, we're going to read on here. For David says of him, I saw the Lord always in my presence, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue exalted. Moreover, my flesh also will be live in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You must have made known to me the ways of life. You will make full of gladness with your presence. Now keep that in your back pocket because we're going to come to some other stuff. So, Verse 29, brethren, I may confidently say to you regarding the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us today. And so because he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn to him with an oath to seat one of his descendants on his throne, he looked ahead and spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that he was neither abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh suffer decay. This Jesus God raised up again, to which we all are witnesses. Therefore, having been exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, He has poured forth this, which you both see and hear. 
or it was not David who ascended into heaven, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your, footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. So here he is comparing. David died. He was a prophet. He was a great man. In a nutshell, though, he's still in his grave. His body decayed. But Jesus did not suffer decay. Jesus was in that tomb and is raised from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And that is why you are seeing and hearing what you are seeing and hearing today. The Holy Spirit coming down and people hearing the gospel and the good deeds of God in their own tongue. It's all being fulfilled. Jesus did not rot in the grave. We serve a living God. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, we're going to be on verse 36. Now, 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let's go through that one again. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart. That is God convicting them. And that's, that's one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit is to convict us. He, he convicts us of sin. And he convicts us, letting, letting us know that there is a coming judgment. And, but, and convicts us of the righteousness and the holiness of God. We are going to be in front of God. There is not one of us here that is going to be exempt. I don't care what you think. When, when it comes to your time, you are going to be in front of God, aren't we? We're all going to give an account, aren't we? But praise you, Jesus, that we can have his righteousness because of that finished work of the cross. And he's saying, Peter went on, after, after God, the Holy Spirit convict, uh, convicted them. And I know we like to do that, don't we, sometimes? We're like, man, I really want so and so to change. I want them to, I want them to be saved. I, I really want them to be different. But we've said it a million times. It's not a behavior modification program. It's not. The Holy Spirit gives you total transformation. You are given a new heart, and you are a new creature. You don't live that way because you are a new creation. It's not that oh, I'm going to give them my willpower. I am going to try. No. We have to stop trying, don't we? We have to stop trying and give it to God because that's when true transformation takes place. So he's saying, repent, which means turn from, turn from your sin, sin, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. And we've talked about that before. Here it is, reaffirmation. No matter how far you are from God, no matter how far off you think you've gone, no matter what is in your past, God can do anything. God can change you and make you that new creation. And it is a free gift that all we have to do is trust in that finished work of the cross. And we can have this forgiveness of sins. And here it is, the day that the Holy Spirit comes down and acts to in Pentecost and the church explodes. We're going to see what happens. We're going to continue on. We have this amazing promise. All who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Can this be an encouragement? Can I just encourage you, especially this week, as all of you have been opening up the newspapers and all of you have been listening to the radio, and I'm sure you've seen it on TV, all of the craziness that keeps coming at us. But you know what? The darker the world gets, the darker the world gets, the brighter the light that we have, which is Jesus, can shine. Amen? So don't get discouraged. I know every time I turn on the radio, I want to puke. But 
But it's okay because we have the hope of Jesus. And we have this light. It doesn't matter what the government says. It doesn't matter what the government does. It doesn't matter what rules and regulations and all this craziness that people come. It doesn't matter, does it, Mr. Van Ostrin? Well, I know you get mad, so do I. And you don't want Ron mad. I get mad, but you know what? The darker the world gets, the brighter the light of Jesus can shine. And that is hope for us. Because the people out there who think that darkness is real and that's all they know, man, when we shine the light, man, when we tell them that Jesus can do anything, which he can, how amazing it can be. Continue. Thank you. Amen, Miss Val. Uh, so, then those who had received his word were baptized, and that day there were added about 3,000 souls. <laughs> now, can I just say how exciting that is? Now, did you ever think of it? Because, I mean, hey, we, we've got this great, we've got this great sound system, and we have amazing worship leader and all these uh, amazing worship team uh, members and, and all this amplification. Peter, as he's preaching, did not have this amplification, did he? 3,000 of them got saved. 3,000. So he didn't have that amplification, did he? I don't read in here where it said they sang four amazing songs, too. They got up there and they sang four amazing songs. It didn't say that, did it? It didn't say that they had these amazing cushions. Cushion? It didn't say that, did it? Now, let us think on that for a minute. As we, we really like these cushion seats, don't we? It's very comfortable. We love this building. It's a beautiful building. It's an amazing building. God has blessed us beyond our craziest imagination. He's going to bless us with a parking lot, too. I know he is. <laughs> he's, he's already blessing us with the roof. I mean, the roof, are, uh, praise God, the roof is right ready to roll. But they didn't have any of that, did they? They didn't have any of that. They didn't have the nice cushion seats. They didn't have the uh, amazing electric guitar. They didn't have the amplification. 3,000 of them got saved that day. So our question is, the obvious question, what are we doing? Right? If we do have all of this amplification, nice cushy seats, nice building, we have everything that they had. We have more than what they had. They didn't have any of this. 3,000 of them. And the way I calculated it out, there's about 27,000 people in Auburn, okay? And, okay, what section? Those are already saved and believers in Jesus Christ, okay? I figure, if this can happen in a day, the 3,000 of them, I say in the next week, by the time we come back here next Sunday, everyone in Auburn can be saved. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> If we go back to where we were in Joshua, God's saying, I'm going to do some amazing things. And if we go back to where we were in Acts 1, he said, hey, you pray. You pray and you wait. So as we are praying, and God is going to be pouring out his spirit, and God is so darn good, then why would it be on, why would it be beyond our imagination that we could have everybody in the Auburn area being a follower of Jesus Christ by next Sunday? Is it absolutely possible? Yeah. Absolutely! So let's start praying. I know you guys are already for revival and awakening. So next Sunday, it's going to be scorecard time, right? <laughs> Amen. God's that good. Shoot, God can have that done by this afternoon. Right? And who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want to see everybody that we know around us being a follower of Jesus Christ and having the joy that we have? Who wouldn't want that? I want that for everybody that I come in contact with. I come in contact with some characters. <laughs> and I love how the 
talks about the testimony. We're going to get a testimony here in a, in a, in a few minutes. Because um, yesterday I was like, whoo, I don't want to ruin my testimony. You know what I'm saying? Because Michael and I, Mr. Campbell, how come it is every time that I have a crazy story that he's involved? What the heck? I got to get me some new friends. So anyway, we're working on pulling up the floor in the house. And his pry bar, I had a member out of our area, his pry bar came and hit my little pinky. Woo. I did not remember my testimony, did I? <laughs> Woo. God is good. We, for Jackson, we have self control in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Verse 22 they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of the bread and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone had, would have need. Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Is God the same yesterday, today, and forever? That's what the Bible says. He is the same. He doesn't change. And if there were being thousands being saved, and then adding the number day by day, amen to it. Now, I love the authenticity that we see here. They were breaking bread together. They were worshiping together. They were praying together. They were, they were learning the apostles' teaching together. They were living life. They were being real with one another. We can do that. I, I pray that we're doing that right now. Right? Help me out here, please. <laughs> we're doing that right now, right? We're, we're being authentic with one another. We're not, we're not putting on a facade, are we? Because when we have the Holy Spirit, it gets real. When we have the true Jesus, it gets real. And I know there's been some heartache this past week, and... and there's been some crazy stuff because there has been not somebody that comes to this church, please. Not somebody that comes to this church. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not kidding you, Mr. Riddle. <laughs> it's not somebody that comes to this church, but they were going around the hand last handful of weeks saying, "Oh, I'm saved and I love Jesus and this, that, the next thing," and and it was all of a sudden, and it, and the damage they did. The damage they did to the people in their circle and in their family, it, it's, it is heartbreaking, the damage they did. But we, as followers of Christ, have to allow ourselves to be changed by the Spirit, right? And when that happens, that authenticity, when we're living life together, that gets a little raw, doesn't it? That, get, that, that even can get a little uncomfortable. When your friends at school, when your friends at school know you're a follower of Jesus Christ, and you're living that life, and you're on fire for God, and this joy, and you're, you're sharing this joy with them, and maybe not partaking in what some of the stuff that they're doing, that, that can get a little raw, can it? Even in your workplace, that can get a little raw, can it? Maybe even at your house with the family that you're living with. That can get a little, that can get a little raw, can it? When you're living this authentic life. But how powerful it is because Jesus and the Holy Spirit were was transforming life and people were getting saved by the zoos. How awesome, how awesome is that? But sometimes it is more comfortable to put on an act. Sometimes it is a little bit more comfortable. Yep, uh, I'm, I'm following Jesus. Oh, that's awesome. Yep, yeah, I don't really want to talk about it. I don't really want to talk about it. I'm not really going to, you know, you do your thing, I'm going to do my thing, and we'll all do our things. And we've, we've become such a society, in fact. I love how this week somebody said, uh, 
fake bloggers instead of Facebook? Because we can really put some stuff together on Facebook to make like we have got it all together. Oh dear God, we've got such a life. We have we have this amazing life, and I'm going to put this little package together that that, and I'm going to present it out to the public on social media that I have it all together, and I have such a pristine and perfect life, and I'm going to post this, 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 and this, and I'm going to say this, 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 and that. And, and I'm going to make my own persona. And that way I don't have to live life with other people. And I can get to, to decide who I let in and who I don't let in. And what I want known and what I don't want known. Now, that can be a little bit easier, can it? Your fake book. I loved when I heard that. Oh, no, it's, it's so true. Is we can put anything out there, and we can put this little package together, and our little profile can make it look like we are just so wonderful. Because you don't have to be raw. You don't have to be authentic to put a little fake book profile together. But in order to live this kind of life, really living life <coughs> on life, and putting ourselves out there to love people the way this is calling us to love people, and to let our guard down. And, I, and I'm not just I'm not just going to let you know this much about me. I'm I'm going to let you know me. That can get a little rough, but that's just what we read about in Acts two. <laughs> letting letting our guard down and not putting up this. Pretty little picture of this bunch of BS. I put it on paper. And not living a fake book profile. Because God can do anything. And when He gets a hold of you, whew, the joy. Amen? I don't know what you get. I asked Kevin if, if he would mind sharing some of his, uh, some of his testimony. <laughs> Because there's nothing more powerful. I'm going to get you a microphone. Too. There, there's nothing more powerful than sharing a testimony and actually seeing when God has changed changed life. And, and I told him he can share as little or as much as he wants because um, it's pretty awesome stuff. So, um, so you've been a follower of Jesus since May, March of 2014. 2014. March of 2014. So give, give us a little background uh, before that. Uh, well, uh, because of some bad decisions I made, I found myself homeless. I was in Syracuse. Um, homeless. I was outside, sleeping under a bridge. Um, and some addiction trouble. Sorry. <laughs>
was able to just, like Pastor Paul was saying, God can do anything. If he can help somebody like me, he can help anyone. <laughs> Army, they 
hired me on as an employee there. Yeah. So now I started making money and I was able to live there and start paying the rent. And then now I'm on to another job, which is a great job, making pretty good money, you know. Um, like I said, I have a car, I have a, you know, a nice place to stay. And I remember one Sunday you, you and Terry were sitting back there and you're like, hey, uh, I got. I, I may not have a vehicle. Can can we pray on that? Remember that? Um, okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, I got my job. I, I got to tell you about the, the first car I got. I was going to another church in Syracuse, and one of the church members that. That, that church actually donated a car to me. So, <clears throat> so I had this car for about six months. Now I had some issues with child support. I was buying the child support. So they came to my job and took this car that was donated to me. You know, and I'm trying to tell the people I didn't, I didn't pay for the car. So I like, you know, and <clears throat> I had child support payments coming out of my paycheck every week. So it's not like I'm not paying it now. But I do more money for rear. So, but they ended up taking the car, so <clears throat> that's what I told Pastor Paul about the car when you guys prayed for me. Yeah, we did pray for him back in that corner. So what happened was two weeks later, the man I worked for uh, put up the money for me to get another car. Amen. You know what I'm saying? God is so good. <laughs> And said, God, you know what? I, 
I want you to take the wheel. I, I want you to do what you did in Kevin's life. I, I want that. I, you might not be great living under the bridge, but you might be living somewhere where you're, you're hiding from God or thinking that you're hiding from God or wishing you were hiding from God, but God can see it all. You can't hide from God because He loves you that much. So, maybe today's the day. Maybe today's the day that you come to that point where, you know what? I, I want this new beginning. I want this new beginning. And I want this relationship with you, God. Maybe today's the day. Pastor Ed, wave your hand. Pastor Ed would love to pray with you today. Pastor Dan, are you still in here? He's here. Oh yeah, he's in the drum. <laughs> and if, uh, if you want to just happen to see Pastor Dan walking in the hall after, and you want to just talk to him about, you know what? I I need that joy. I need that hope. Tap him on the shoulder on the way on the way out. Amen. Because God can do anything, and He wants to do some amazing.